رح نرجع ونتابع منبدا هالقسم مع برزنتيشن مع نديم قصار مدير عام ب ال سي بنك ومنتشكرهم على دعمهم الدايم لا ووفل تفضل اهلا وسهلا بالجميع ثانك يو فور هافينغ مي وومن ايكونومي women empowerment is it really something we should even be talking about today isn't it obvious we should be doing something about it instead especially that we all know that in the MENA region women only generate 18 percent of GDP compared to world average of 37 and increasing female labor force participation to the level of men could boost the regional GDP by 47%. Why Lebanon that ranks so high in education and social freedom and was ranked 105th in 2006 as per Global Gender Gap Index by the World Economic Forum has now regressed to 140 out of 149 countries. What is really happening? What is going on? or rather what is not happening and what is not going on. We use women empowerment mostly as a photo opportunity and for visibility, and we really are doing nothing about it. Why in a country where all this is available, aren't we improving? Why are women not empowered properly? Why should we score low on metrics like labor force with only 19% of women participation in the labor force in MENA and 23% in Lebanon compared to 46 in middle economy countries? Why women are not in labor force when they have a very strong literacy rate of 88.1% and in an enrollment in high education that is higher than that of men? I would like to mention here that we, if we split this figure on the public and private sector, we will see that the private sector is more active in employing women. And coming to the banking sector, I can comfortably say that we almost have parity. What have we done? Whose fault is it? Not that I want to play the blaming game, but for a fact, we cannot blame any more religion or culture because we all know it's not the truth. What we should blame is the lack of will, of interest to do something. For the first time, we have a prime minister who is very vocal about women empowerment. And we have four women ministers, none the least, Sadiqna Sitmay. We at BLC are ready to take advantage of this momentum. We have battled single-handedly for the last seven years in this field to be recognized and to speak today in front of you all as achievers in women empowerment. We wish we were not exclusive. We wish we can pave the way to others to follow. It's not really very complicated to get the ball rolling. Stop stereotyping. If you own a business, nominate incompetent women for promotion, change social bias, choose your word, teach your children by leading by example. Lebanon today faces a big economic challenge. We need a bigger economy. We need growth. We need more productivity. We need our economy to be twice the size of what it is today. On the other hand, we have half of our population that has not been taken advantage of economically. Do you know that on average, an av on average a man earns in Lebanon $23,400? Do you know how much a woman earns? 6,000. True, these numbers do not represent a salary gap for similar position, rather average income. For sure, but, we, for, but for sure we all can see the economic opportunity ahead if we are able to have women earning just as much. We are doing women no favor in allowing them to work and produce. We are doing ourselves a favor. 
by including women's perspective to create balance and positive impact. Let's all get out of the cliché, scoops, and photo opportunity and really do something about it. BLC has built a real and serious experience in doing so, and we have shared it with over 100 financial institutions around the world. Why other outside of Lebanon can do it and we can't? Why do we export the best we have and not make sure and not make use of it locally? Dear government representative, now we have one, and policy makers, let's all eliminate discriminatory laws against women. Let us include women in our workforce, creating a diverse, healthy, and balanced working environment. Let us provide women with equal opportunity to establish, finance, and grow their business, eliminating all sorts of gender bases. Let us create laws to protect and provide equal right, equal pay, and equal opportunity. Let us make sure basic economic rights, such as a mother opening an account for her minor child without the legal guardian approval, are not overlooked. Let us recommend to our friend at the BDL, Bank Masrif al Markazi, to consider a new set of conditions to for subsidized loan that include a woman component, whether percentage of women ownership, percentage of women workforce, or any other gender component they see fit. Let us go even further to enforce a gender component in the condition of large corporations, SMEs, and government tenders, and even suppliers, as BLC has modestly done for its supplier base. Let us consider tax advantages and incentive to encourage more women to participate in the economy. Let us leverage on existing private sector entities as champions and change the rich gender quality. Let us create standardized national benchmark and enforce a clear communication and progress. And most importantly, we need a national database. Let us disaggregate by gender so we can know where our weaknesses are and start working on them. We are in 2019 and are still lacking vital statistic on a national level, whether for women or SME. It is not that complicated. We have done it in BLC, and I'm sure we can do it on a national scale. I extend my hand to all those who are serious about it, and I am sure together we can do it. Every place I was here on the 6th May, and I want to say it, and I always have a presence. Today, I'm here, على نخبة من الحضور معظم النساء عم بقنعهم بشو بقدراتهم ما هني عارفين قدراتهم على انه ممكن يوصلوا ما هني عارفين اللي لازم نقنعه بل بل بلبنان وبالمجتمع انه هو العنصر الرجال انا انا اكيد انه عبكرة كان في عدد غير قليل من الرجال موجودين منشان هيك ما اجيت uh, ف, uh, وهيدول لسوء الحظ مش موجودين بيناتنا بعد الظهر uh, لازم نعمل كل واحد منا هو شغل على العنصر الرجال ببيته بين ولاده نحن وقت بالبقل سيد بلشنا ندخل العنصر النسائي اللي, تخن... اللي زعلوا واللي اضطرينا نقنعهم هو العنصر الرجال بالبنك لأنه ما كانوا متقبلين زي اللي كما يجب حتى بالبيت عندي وقت بنتي قررت تدرس انجينيرين قال لي سأل الأسئلة الغريبة هو ابني واضطرينا نشرح له ومن بعد ما شرحنا له صار هو اللي يدافع فاللي بتأملوا منكم انه انتو كل واحد يجرب يجيب قد ما بيقدر رجال وذكور الى هالاجتماعات لانه هيدول اللي بدون نقنعه انا اليوم حضرت فيكم واكيد كل شيء قلتوا بتعرفوه وما زدت عم عرفتكم شيء وشكرا للكل شكرا وشكرا للبي ال سي للدعم الدايم لا وفل ننتقل للجلسه الثانيه اللي بتطرق لموضوع المراه بعالم الاعمال ومن ان بزنس انفسترز ريسك تيكرز اند انوفيتورز بندعي سبيكرز نادري شاملو انترناشونال ديفلوبمنت ادفايزر 
former senior advisor to the chief economist of MENA, U.S., Iran. Rima Husseini, founder of the Blessing Foundation, recipient of the Goldman Sachs and Fortune Global Women Leaders Award, recipient of UNIDO, Women of the Year Social and Entrepreneurship Lebanon, Shaima Salmin, Kuwait Managing Director for Sklumberger, Dalia Wahba, Regional Director of IFC, International Finance Corporation, Egypt. Tfadalu. بحاورهم رئيس تجمع رجال وسيدات الأعمال اللبنانيين بالعالم الدكتور فؤاد زمكحل. زمكحل. تفضلوا. نحن وناطرين المودريتور خلوني ذكر اول شيء ارجع اشكر سبونسرز تاتش بي ال سي بانك خليني ذكر بانه ضروري تكونوا كثير اكتف على السوشيال ميديا تحديدا على تويتر هاشتاج ووفر 2019 وباخر المؤتمر اليوم رح بيكون في سحاب على جائزه مجوهرات كلاس لاكثر شخص ناشط على تويتر اليوم من بلش؟ they can introduce their thing. بس يزمك حلجي. بركم نستعين بزميلي موريس لحتى يبلش بالبانل. موريس تفضل. من عرف بس من عرف بس معك تفضل تفضل. هاي دي سبوتد على الآخر. الرجال اللي بيتأخروا الصيت علينا على كل حال <تصفيق> طيب مرحبا معالي الوزيرة بتذكر من كم شهر وقفت هون قلت لك معالي الوزيرة انه اوه بعدها مخربطة هالمرة زبطت معنا ما في مرة ما يشي تجاوب تطلب مني اني اكون موجود لغم انه عندي طيارة بعد اربع ساعات وبدي رح اضبطي بغراضي قالت لي لا بدك تكون موجود فانا مضطر ما فيني زعليك بس قبل ما نبلش ننطر دكتور فؤاد ليوصل في كلمة كنت بدي اقولها بالبانل تبعولي فرح اقولها هلا لما فتت على الاوتيل حسيت بايجابية كثير حلوة مش بس لانه كلهم ستات لا لانه كلهم طاقة وكلهم نجاح نحن بهذا الظرف اللي عايشين فيه مع هالتخبط السياسي اللي بيحضر تلفزيونات عم بيشوف وبيعرف فساد وسرقة ونهب و وانهيارات بس فتت لهون بعرف كثير منيح ليش نحن بعدنا بلبنان للاسف بقول للاسف اوقات لانه بعدنا عم نحارب وخايفين كرمال شو يعني آه كل ما احضر هيك مؤتمر بعرف انه كل اللي عم بيصير على التلفزيون هو فوفاش سياسي بس حقيقه لبنان هي الموجوده هون فعليا آه بعرف آه بعرف معالي الوزيره قديش بتباطح وبتحارب لتعمل هذا المؤتمر وتضمن يكون في العدد الاكبر مش بس لننجح المؤتمر لا لنفرج الصوره الصحيحه عن بيروت اللي بتشبهنا نحن عن لبنان اللي بيشبهنا نحن انا عملت برنامج اصلا على ام تي في حطيت فيه كل الطاقات الشبابيه تحديت الكل قالوا لي ما راح تلاقي انا عملت 24 حلقه في 165 مبدع ومبدعه من لبنان ومبتكرين من لبنان وقصص نجاح من لبنان 
سيدات وشباب ورجال كبار وصغار عملت سيجمنت اسمه رغم كل شيء على نشرة الأخبار بعد ثلاث سنين لليوم تخطينا الألف قصة ناجحة من لبنان بعتقد هذا التحدي الأكبر بفرجة قديش نحن عنا طاقات وهي صورة صحيحة على لبنان يعني نقدر نجمع عم بتطلع بكن بالكتيب هلا أنا مش عم جرب لقي ملي هوا مثل ما نقول بالتلفزيون لا بلغة التلفزيون بس بعرف كتير منيح لما شوف مؤسسات دولية ال اف سي الورد بانك المؤسسات الدولية اللي مشاركة بهذا المؤتمر شوف الأسماء الموجودة هون بهذا الكتيب بعرف قديش نبخير بعدنا وبعد في أما رغم كل اللي عم ينحكى على التلفزيون أنا وجاي كنت عم بسمع مؤتمر صحافي لمدير عام وزارة الميل ومبارح سمعنا مؤتمرات صحافية وما عم نوقف سرقة ونهب وحق عليه وحق عليك وإلى ما هنالك هذا كله بالسياسة وكله له حل إذا نحن بدنا حل وإيه في حل نحن عم نشتغل بالكواليس مع علي الوزيرة بتعرف وكتار منكم بيعرفوا نحن عم نشتغل بالكواليس تنقدم لحلول قد ما فينا لأنه في حلول إذا ما نتقاضف بالمسؤوليات ما رح نوصل لمحل أنا كتير مبسوط لما بتطلع بكادر 365 درجة وشوف سيدات إلا بالعادة نحن منضل رجال 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 بس فتنا على الوزارة لقينا أربع سيدات قمار رغم التخبط السياسي اللي بيجمعهم على طاولة وحدة بس بعرف كتير منيح أدل أربع أربع وزارات رغم من انتمائاتهم المختلفة للسياسة أنا موريس ماتا شاب من لبنان الأربع وزارات اللي هني سيدات بمسلوني أكتر من الرجال الموجودين بالوزارة اليوم ف... ما اسمع لا لا خليني خليني ضلوا ين... لا المعالي الوزيرة عملت وزيرة كتير كرهوة أنا ما بس ماني مستعد أتحمل كره هالقد هي تحملت فهي بتتحمل أنا ما بتحمل هالقد كره دكتور أنا انطريت أني ملي شوية هواء بالما توصل فتفضل <تصفيق> هاي البان اللي لك وأنا بعد الشاي برجع بليكم بديسكشن عن قصص نجاح من لبنان كمان يلا أم <تصفيق> أول شيء بيعطيكم بعتذر أنا ما تأخرت بس أقولكم إنه كنا مستقبلين مدام جيجوها اللي كانت معكم وكنا عم نحكي على ال على اللي حبيتو أكثر على لبنان فاعتذار شديد وكنا بالبناية نحكي بالإنجليزي أو نحكي بالعربي بصراحة وقت بندعى على نحكي عن ريادة الأعمال أول شيء بس الحالة ليه وقت بنحكي ريادة أعمال بنسأل أو بنميز بين السيدة أو السيد وقت بنقول ريادة الأعمال هل ريادة الأعمال هي لجنس هل ريادة الأعمال هي لعمر هل ريادة الأعمال هي لتلميز هل ريادة الأعمال هن لرجال أو سيدات أعمال أو ريادة الأعمال هي بالقلب أول شيء أو ريادة الأعمال هي لشخص أو ريادة الأعمال هي بالفكر أو ريادة الأعمال هي فكرة أول شيء ما بقدر ابدأ بلا ما أتشكر الشخص هاللي أكتر شيء عم يعمل مش بس لغاية العمل هاللي عم يعمل للبنان وشخص هاللي كل ما أطلع فيه هو رسالة ثقة ورسالة مسابرة لأن المسابرة منا بالعمل هي المسابرة الحقيقية هي الحياة أهلا وسهلا فيك ست ماي ومرسي للي عم تعطينا إياه اليوم بتطلع بكل واحد موجود وبتطلع بولادي وبتطلع بحالي وبقول لشو نتخبى وراء أصبعنا كل واحد منكم بيعرف أدي لبنان وأديش المنطقة وأدي الاقتصاد الموجود اليوم عم بيمر من أصعب فترات من تاريخه الاقتصادي والاجتماعي لما نحكي عن السياسة وتمنقول هالمخاطر والمخاطر اللي عم نعيشها بسألكم وبسأل حالي هل المخاطر يعني من دلنا مسكرين على حالنا ومنمتوا بتمرق الموجة أو المخاطر الموجودة ممكن يكونوا فرصة بظن إذا منطلع حوالينا ومنطلع على تاريخنا منشوف أنه هند المخاطر هن أكبر فرصة موجودة لريادة العمل لأنه بالنهاية وقت كل شيء على ما يران وقت كل شيء ماشي لسوء الحظ أو لحظنا هن الشركات الكبار ودول الكبيرة اللي بيخذوا الحصة الكبيرة لكن وقتها في مشكلة معينة ببينوا الرياديين أكثر بكثير من الكبار وهيدا اللي خلى على كل حال ونحن نفتخر بغيرة العمل اللبنانية هل هن المختربين اللبنانيين هل يسافروا من مئات السنين وهل شغلة كثير بسيطة وهيدا بنفتخر فيها الرياد اللبناني تسعين بالمئة بلش من الصفر ووصل وين ما هو موجود اليوم فالرسالة الأولى 
هو انه نحن وين موجودين اليوم مع كل هالمشاكل وانا مقتنع من هاللي عم بلكون اياه وبتمنى اقدر اوصل لكم هالرساله انه اليوم هو الوقت الاحسن لرياده الاعمال بنقول هالفكره شوي لانه عم نحكي اليوم بهالبانل برياده الاعمال عند السيدات مع انه برجع بقول لكم جوات قلبي ما بلاقي ابدا في فرق وبحب اخذ مثل بلجيكا اليوم بلجيكا لانه بركي هو البلد هاللي عندنا اكثر شيء ارقام او بحجمه بيتقرب من لبنان ببلجيكا 50% من القوى العامله هن سيدات 50% سيدات يعني مسؤولين عن الناتج المحلي من فوق ال 50% اذا ببرم على لبنان بيقول بدي اقول بكل اسف انه اليوم لحد ارقام بنك الدول لحد هديقه البطالة عند السيدات العاملات بلبنان تعدى ال 38% هذا يعني لسوء الحظ الشركات ما عم يقدروا يوصفوا لكن نفس الوقت الريادة عند السيدات عم بتكون صعبة خاصة ببلدنا وبالمنطقة لكن نفس الوقت إذا بتطلع بس بآخر أرقام اللي هن إنماء ريادة الأعمال ريادة الأعمال اليوم أكثريتها عم بتكون بالرجال فوق 70% و 30% عند السيدات وبركي على البانل رح يعطونا تفسير ليش لكن النقطة الإيجابية هو النمو بريادة الأعمال عند الرجال عم بتكون 34% لكن عند السيدات وصلت لسنة 2018 عالميا إلى 218% هذا يعني وهيدي كمان رسالة لكم إياها أنه عالميا ريادة الأعمال عم بتكون أكثر بكثير عند السيدات تعال لكم شيء بعرفه وريته بس بدي اسمع اكثر بكثير من البانل كمان اذا بنشوف شوي بالارقام لنكون هيك شوي واقعيين بنشوف انه كمان رياده العمل عند السيدات العمر يعني بين ال25 و30 في قسم كبير من الرياده عم بيكون بهالعمر بهالعمر وبرك لانه البانل بين 25 و30 سنه حوالي رح يخبرونا عن تجربتهم والقسم الثاني هي الحقيقه هيك هيك شفت على كل حال والحقيقه من بعد ال 30 لسنه ال 50 رياده الاعمال عند السيدات عم 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 تنزل، ليش؟ لانه بركي عم بيعطوا اهميه اهتمامات ثانيين او ما عم بيقدروا يفصلوا هيدي بركي هن كمان مره بخبرونا اياها، وبيرجع بعمر ال 50 وطالع عم ترجع تزداد رياده الاعمال بركي لانه تكونت عائلات لهاللي عم بيعمل عائله او او اشتغل وعم يرجع يحط هالفرصه، اكيد ما في تميز بس مهم نقدر نحن نفهم وهذا حابب اليوم البانل يخبرونا بالنهايه بقصص نجاح وبنفس الوقت فشل لانه هاللي بس بيفكر بالنجاح وبرايه في بس نجاح هو خطا كثير كبير ما في شخص ما في رياده وصل الى نجاح ما مر بصعوبات وبفشل صعب وصعب وصعب هو حدا نحن بنطلع بقصص النجاح باسامي كبار وبنجرب نحن نوصل عليهم لكن ننسى او بنتناسى او ما بنعرف شو خلاه هون يوصل هالنجاح فأنا حابب من قلبي الفن اللي يكون معنا يخبرنا تجربته الخاصة ورح أسأل سؤالات محددة هي كل واحد بيقدر يجاوبنا وحابب كتير أنه الأوديونس يكون معنا نحن بركي تحدد لي تقريباً البانل ثلاث ساعات مش هيك ست ماي فرح نقسم فرح نقسم من هاي الثلاث ساعات عشرين دقيقة عشرين دقيقة للي موجودين وباقي الساعتين رح يكونوا لألكون هيك بنقدر متحدث لنقدر نفهم اكثر. I can shift in English if you want. Okay, so I will repeat my speech. Whoever. <laughs> I don't? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, yes, I will start. Okay, I know that uh, the, the question was sent, but you didn't know that on my panel discussion are not prepared, so I have to surprise you. Uh, I want you to introduce yourself because you will do it much better than I will. Uh, however, I would like to ask exactly about your path. About your path, I mean exactly what are the difficulties, what are the main challenges you had, and how you reached the stage you are, and if you have to give uh, three main, I won't say advice, but I say three main uh, inputs and assets, because I would call this an asset. What would you say to any entrepreneurship and specifically to our youth and our uh, women, specifically in these difficult times? Because we know how difficult it is to sustain today, but it's much more difficult to create. But is it really the time to create? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is this on? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. you can. Okay. Closer, that, that, like that. 
Well, thank you very much. And first, of, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, Her Excellency uh, Minister Mesha Shidiak for inviting me again to to this uh, um, to this wonderful gathering. I was um, it, I was it was my pleasure to be in Jordan with you, and I'm very delighted to be here today, also, and to meet so many wonderful women. Really, it's it's uh, it's a lot of energy for me. Um, I wanted to maybe take a little bit of a detour before answering your sure. question. Uh, first of all, I, uh, to introduce myself, I, it, uh, I am a former World Banker. I was for 33 years at the World Bank, I mean, moving up the ladder, and uh, my last position was the senior advisor to the chief economist of the Middle East and North Africa region. In that capacity, I had the really the wonderful pleasure to work on women's entrepreneurship in the Middle East and North Africa region. And what I found is that despite the fact that we think we are not doing very well, compared to many par other parts of the world, I find that we have some really fascinating and first-rate women entrepreneurs and their numbers are growing. So I want to start on a positive note to say that in comparison to many other regions, uh, women entrepreneurship is uh, is something that has uh, um, has grown roots in this region, and uh, hopefully it will grow many many uh, branches as well. Uh, I want to make maybe one point in terms of uh, what was discussed by the previous speaker uh, about the cost of gender inequality, and um, uh, the speaker mentioned that. The, in the Middle East, uh, you know, we, we are losing something like 47 percent, or the GDP of this region could be about 47 percent higher if women participated or if there were no gender equality. In Lebanon, let me just give you the, the, some sort of like ma orders of magnitude. According to the studies that have been used and which are being used by the World Bank and IMF, um, the, uh, G the GDP of Lebanon could be 28% higher than it is today. So if we say that the GDP of Lebanon is $55 billion roughly, uh, it, it means that we are losing $14 billion of not uh, for this in gender inequality. $14 billion is a lot of, uh, is a lot of uh, loss uh, in, in that sense. And the question comes, why is this loss uh, taking place? And the, the, the quick answer is that there is a waste of human capital, a waste of human capital in the sense that there are talents and, and capabilities in this, uh, in this uh, society and in this economy that, that are not being used. Uh, part of it is, of course, uh, due to discrimination, um, to legal discrimination. What is interesting in Lebanon is that we have, we, we don't have just, a, let's say, a, everybody likes to, to say that it's because of Muslim, whatever this law, Sharia, but in Lebanon you have so many different uh, denominations who have their own uh, legal uh, structures. What is interesting is that one finds that across all of these legal um, structures by the different denominations, there is a persistence discrimination not just against women but against married women, which is very important because once a woman gets married, she falls into a very different legal structure or legal uh, um, regulations than she falls on, in, in, under normal, uh, I mean, if she's not married. And that leads to a kind of a catch-22 where I, you know, they are being uh, uh, you know, uh, discriminated in the workplace or underestimated in the workplace. Now, you asked me the question as to how, what it was my own personal path uh, of getting to where I am, but I would like to kind of maybe generalize it a little bit more. Uh, I think that what I have for, uh, perceived in both my own career at the World Bank as well as, you know, uh, the studies that I have done and the work that I have done outside of the World Bank is that women don't network effectively. And as a reason, uh, uh, and because of that, we don't have access to where um, dec de decisions are being taken, where uh, power is being, you know, utilized, and as a result of that, we uh, don't, you know, we, we cannot uh, capitalize on our capacities. Men do this much better, and as a result of that, it's not necessarily that they are 
more competent or more confident, but they have better networks. And I can tell you many, many uh, anecdotes about, uh, about uh, and that. Now, uh, I want to be brief so that we can uh, have yes, perhaps a do. second. Uh, I just want to maybe uh, mention something, uh, re, uh, a new initiative that I have begun with, together with several other women, which is called the Billion Dollar Fund for Women. And for the Billion Dollar Fund for Women, we are trying to focus on the segment of women who are um, young women, uh, university educated women with ideas for entrepreneurship. And what we find is that across the world, not just in the Middle East, but across the world, women get so much less, uh, hardly anything, about 2% of venture capital funds. There is plenty of microfinance available, but microfinance is not venture capital. For real entrepreneurship, one needs venture capital, one needs risk, risk, uh, early stage risk financing, and that women are not uh, able to access. Why? Because of some implicit biases that, that exist. So what we, what we are trying to do, we are not taking anybody's money, we don't want anybody's money, but we are going to venture capital firms and saying, you know, there are women entrepreneurs. We go, we, go to women, uh, we go to venture capital firms and they said, oh, we would very much like to invest in women entrepreneurship, but we can't find them. And then I go to many of these pitch fests, uh, startup weekends, and many of these other events where women entrepreneurs are coming, and uh, certainly women entrepreneurs in, innova in innovative, not just, you know, apps, and I'm not talking about that, but really innovative uh, women entrepreneurs, and they said nobody you know, is giving giving us any funding. So there is obviously a kind of a, a disconnect between these two, two groups. And so what we are asking people to do, uh, our funds, the funds that have uh, uh, committed to us, including some in, here in Lebanon, is to really go and look for women entrepreneurs. They don't look. When they don't look, they don't find. And so to actually go and find women entrepreneurs, uh, listen to them, and if they don't take them to act at least give feedback, give actual feedback. Because if, you, if people come and present something to you and you don't take them without any feedback, you are repl replicating your implicit bias onto these, uh, onto these, uh, um, you know, onto the situation. But if you have to give feedback over time, that implicit bias is being eroded. So that's what we hope to do. And through that, we hope that we can imp uh, uh, promote a, a new generation of women leaders in the business sector that can actually in the future have big corporations and, and mobilize uh, more, f um, you know, more economic activity. Thank you very well, much. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Shamlou. And uh, I will just give you my second question, but after the second round, so we can have, have time to prepare it. I would like to ask you, based on your experience, uh, to give us uh, one success story that passed through your career, success story of one of these uh, women entrepreneurship, and one of the failures, if you have any example, so we trust to, to learn about it, because it's good to extrapolate on successes and to learn from failures. So in case you have any two successes that passed through your career, just after the second round, oh, sure. I give you time to prepare yourself, yes. you know. Um, <laughs> but you, you have discussed about married women, you have discussed about entrepreneurship, you have discussed about the very main point. So you did something uh, uh, indirectly. You have presented our second speaker. Because if I have to present uh, uh, Ms. Rima Hosseini, I can say that proudly, you have succeeded in two ways. You have succeeded uh, in the family life. You're a happy mother, a happy wife. And I know that um, that's excellent. And at the same time, you regret entrepreneurs who, in French, you say, in Boita Idea, you never start. I mean, uh, persevering, trying, changing. So we really want to listen, not advices. We want your story. Tell us why you did it, how, and how you kept this balance, because you always have this, uh, this, uh, this question, can we keep the balance between family life, between entrepreneurship, between business? Uh, can we do all of this together? And I can say, in case you want to do something done, give it to a woman, specifically in our part of the world, because she can balance to be a perfect wife, an excellent mother, and a great entrepreneur. So you're a, you're a living example, oh, Rima. Thank well, please you. do. Thank you. I'm humbled and I'm, I'm honored to be on this panel with achieved uh, women uh, in business and thank you, Your Excellency, for this opportunity. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I started uh, in the corporate world very um, uh, way back. I started as a, uh, a banker at Citibank. 
And then from there, and if, because I want to pitch to, a, to, a, uh, to an advice to give to the entrepreneurs. And then from there, I moved to create, to co-found my own business with my sister, uh, which we started around 20 years ago when there was no, uh, you know, the hype about entrepreneurship and incubators. We just started very naturally, very organically, uh, created a business and started uh, growing this business organically. Uh, and uh, this is the best way to grow until today. This is the best way to grow, for, for me at least, this is what I think, the best way to grow a business. Organic growth is the only growth that stays. Uh, we started growing the business and we expanded uh, within Lebanon to the Gulf regions. So we uh, opened uh, our uh, shops, uh, be it on a partnership basis or on franchising uh, bases in the, in the Arab regions and we have shops um, around. And uh, we are still here, definitely there are challenges. Uh, we went through um, uh, a lot of difficulties, but uh, you know, every time we see a wall, then we say we'll, we'll deal with it. You know, either we cross it or we break it or we move around it. Uh, in 2012, uh, we felt the need for the creation of a network of women in business because uh, one day, uh, one of the bank, uh, bankers came to visit us, uh, and then uh, on the way out, they just uh, tell us, can we give you just a small remark? I said, yes, go ahead. He said, you are the hundredth uh, company I, we visit, and the first one that is 100% woman-owned. So that was like really striking. We were so much taken by, by the work we're doing and not really looking at the ecosystem. So then we started thinking, why? Why isn't there so many women in business? We have been in business, we have been opening, uh, traveling to you know, different, uh, very conservative places, uh, partnering with male partners, and we never had like this uh, discomfort or this you know, kind of discrimination. And then we started thinking maybe it's about networking, maybe about putting women in the right places with the right people. In 2012, I, was, uh, uh, I went to a mentoring program with U.S. State Department and the Fortune, and I was mentored by one of the most powerful women in New York, Susan Whiting, the vice chair of Nielsen. And then when I came back, I saw the, the, uh, the effect and the impact of, of mentoring, and I, I thought, why this concept does not exist here in Lebanon? Let us create a network of women in business where uh, uh, women connect and they, uh, they find like uh, uh, women alike who are in business, they can uh, you know, uh, uh, communicate with, inspire from. And uh, this is what happened. The Blessing Foundation uh, was uh, founded in 2012 uh, to empower women in business and uh, help them by, uh, by helping them to start, uh, 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 sustain, evolve and scale. Uh, we created, start by creating this network of women in business. Now we are at the network of more than 400 women, of uh, achieved women in business and emerging women entrepreneurs, uh, uh, sustained by uh, uh, creating a program, a mentoring program uh, on a yearly basis where we put together on one-on-one -on -one mentoring relationships, women in business with emerging women entrepreneurs uh, evolve by uh, 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 giving the references of the women in our network to international uh, uh, organizations like Fortune. They go to programs and uh, to attend programs with Goldman Sachs, with Fortune, Vital Voices, and, and others, and scale uh, by, uh, by, by helping them market uh, their products. Last year, uh, we uh, wanted to create a bigger impact. So we had like those fantastic women who are willing to give, willing to help, we said we want to have a bigger impact. So last year, uh, we, uh, uh, we started the, the project Shim uh, Lebanon in partnership with UN Women and with GCNL and with the support of the Prime Minister's office, uh, where we are connecting uh, women in rural Lebanon to uh, international designers to create uh, products that we can market and help those women in rural uh, Lebanon to uh, become productive uh, women. So uh, this year, uh, also as part of uh, the capacity building and, uh, and you know, to, 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 we want to, we consider those women as an untapped resource uh, 
uh, economic resource and we want to get the best out of them. So uh, this year we are putting those women with the women in our network, the achieved women on mentoring relationships where they come for job shadowing days and they inspire from, they get help to achieve their goals. Because we believe that, you know, with, with uh, governments reforming uh, policies, uh, businesses committing to, uh, to empowering women and NGOs creating awareness, this is the only way if they all uh, work and uh, all the efforts are conducted in tandem, this is the only way to uh, achieve progress uh, towards gender uh, parity. So this is like uh, my story in a nutshell, uh, and what I, for the family, how, uh, how I can like uh, juggle between all the responsibilities, foundation work and family, I just uh, convinced myself that I cannot do everything every day. So, you know, this is a conviction. This is what keeps me less stressed. And when I'm doing something, I give it a whole. When I'm with my family, I'm, my whole is, my, with, is with the family. When I'm at business, I forget about everything else. Same when I'm with a woman at the foundation, uh, I, give, uh, I give my whole into this. We'll get back to the Yes, we will. Uh, I, have, uh, I, have, I have other questions, but I just have to, to make it more interactive. Uh, you know, Rima, you're bringing me to, to a kind of strategy that I would like to share, which is the 3D strategy. That you per you're a perfect example of the 3D strategy, and that's something that we have to apply. The first thing that uh, I've listened in your story is the development. You're always into development, looking for new ideas, knowing that there is a life cycle of, of any entrepreneurship, of any product, of, of any person. So by always trying to develop, this puts you always uh, at a high level because otherwise, and this would happen with most of entrepreneurs, you have a peak and then you fell down and it's too late to go back. So this development, which is the first D I would like to share, is very important. The second thing, and, and I love to, the second D is the diversification. You're so diversified, and by being diversified, you limit the risk. So you might have something that works, another thing that is on a cash cow, another thing that, that's the, the smaller phase, and that's, I think, that, that is helping you. And the, the third one, without naming it, you delegate. You said uh, that you delegate. You are through associations, so you're finding good recruit. You delegate to some support, and by delegation, you can develop and diversify. So I was able to identify these uh, three, three Ds. And then I, I have a question, so you have time to prepare. I would like to ask you, uh, how are you financing yourself? I'm very sorry, because I think that the finance, microfinance, uh, financing for SME is a big hustle to a lot of entrepreneurs. So if you can share with us uh, this, I will highly appreciate in the name of the audience. Uh, I'm moving to Ms. Shaima Salmin from Kuwait. Uh, you're the managing director of Chamberger Kuwait. You have asked me how I know about Chamberger. We all know about Chamberger. So, so yesterday we had it, it so, uh, but however I have to ask you in a couple of minutes, I'm really eager to listen to your story from the day you have put your CV to how you reach your position today. And do you consider yourself an entrepreneur because you're an entrepreneur within a large group. So I call this an entrepreneur because we need entrepreneurship within companies. Entrepreneurship doesn't mean that each one of us who has his own company. Entrepreneurship doesn't mean that you have to have seven billion companies tomorrow. Entrepreneurship is working into group. Entrepreneurship is being entrepreneur within existing groups. So you are an example. So tell us from the day you put your CV till today in three minutes, in five if you want. I have three minutes, sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm just minutes. kidding. You yeah, take your time. You have three hours. We have three hours, so you take your time. Thank you so much. Uh, first, uh, I would like to thank you, May, so much for having Can me. Can you just again? bring the microphone? Yes, thank you. The microphone. You can. You can put back here. Can you repeat your question? Yes, I will. <laughs> and my comments. <laughs> okay, so. Shaima, we're not very happy with you. Thank you. I want to thank May, especially for inviting me here again. I think uh, one of the things that makes it special is the positiveness that you feel around all the women here, how proud we are. I think uh, one of the speakers before, he gave a presentation saying that we don't need to be reminded. I think in this event especially, I felt it. Women are, don't need to be reminded of how strong they are. Uh, my story, I don't know if people know Shlamberger. Thank you so much. I think you've done your research. I come from 
uh, the men world. I come from the oil field industry, which is an industry, I think, till today, with all the, the development that we have, is still Mazalat men's world. So going back 18 years ago, when I joined uh, Shambhaja, I never put a CV, by the way. So I graduated from the States. My major is uh, architectural and structural engineering. It has nothing to do with the oil industry. I came back looking for a job. But then one of my friends in high school, she called me. She said, في شركة في الأحمدي. طبعا الأحمدي, people who know Kuwait would know الأحمدي هي منطقة النفط. يعني we don't really go to Ahmadi every day. There is a company who wants to hire uh, female engineers. Like, okay. I called in, I got an appointment, and I still remember the first manager who interviewed me was Lebanese. Uh, I walked into his office, and uh, by the way, I never, there was no Google or research. I don't know what they do. I don't even know what Schlumberger I never knew how to pronounce it at the beginning. Schlumberger, Schlumberger, you know. <laughs> so I went in, my first interview, and he started asking me questions. I think he felt that I don't know what is the Schlumberger and what is the oil field industry. I know as a Kuwaiti I'm supposed to know, but usually the oil industry is only in Ahmadi. And Ahmadi is like 20 or half an hour drive, which we don't go to every day unless you work in this industry. So he started asking me questions, what do I like, what do I do, do I work long like hours and all of that. And he told me that in the oil industry we work long hours and sometimes we go to jobs where it is six hours continuous. And me being young there, I thought, okay, it's about six hours, it's fine. Then he went 12 hours, would you stay for 24 hours? He went all the way to 36 hours. In my mind, I'm like, okay, is he trying to test me and see if I'm gonna continue saying yes? I said yes. I didn't know why we stay for 36 hours or 24 hours at that time. Then uh, I did several interviews. Then I learned after the years there was debate saying, should we hire a female Kuwaiti? Would she be successful in the field? Anyway, so uh, I get hired for Schlumberger, but uh, when in Schlumberger, the way they do it with engineers, when you get hired, you're a mobile, which means you should travel, you should not work at your home country. So I took my assignment and I worked in uh, their resort Syria. I worked in Egypt, I worked in Indonesia, and I worked in UAE. So my story starts when going to the field. And field is al nafdiya which means in the middle of nowhere, in your coveralls. I tell you, I didn't go shopping for three years because all I do is wear my coveralls every day to work. This became my life because I learned this is the 36 hours was him being nice to me. It's beyond 36 hours. So I will share with you some of the stories and I don't want to call them difficulties, I call them challenges. I think difficulties are a bit harsh. I think I like to call them challenges and how I moved on. Coming from Middle East, GCC specifically, being a Kuwaiti, going in the middle of the jungle of Indonesia. So I took the plane and I was the only Kuwaiti in the plane. The hostess came and said, you're a Kuwaiti? Why are you going to Indonesia? Then uh, he took me, I remember I was in the economy, he took me, I started, I think the Kuwaiti had played a good role. I he took me to business and he tried to understand why would I want to go work in Indonesia. Honestly, at that time, I didn't know why. I just knew that my assignment is Indonesia. I went there, I, they gave me the cover rolls and everything. Uh, then the first job was in the middle of the jungle. And this is the first challenge, if we're talking about challenges. So I go to a job and uh, they give you the briefing of uh, safety and all of that and they tell you it's an open space, the monkeys and, and me is like, okay. We went there, we worked 12 hour shifts in that rig specifically. The first rig we went to, it was just the rig where we work and two cabins. One is for the company man and there is another cabin. When he came, he did the introduction, welcome to the site and everything. Uh, I just want to let you know that if you need anything, coffee or something, you can go to this place. And if you want to, excuse me, use the bathroom, you can use the bathroom, but the bathroom has no door. <laughs> like, okay, that's a good start. And I'm assigned to this rig for a month. And I do six to six. So then I took this challenge and I learned that you should not eat or drink anything for 12 hours just to be at the safe side. Then from that, I moved 
to, uh, I worked in, uh, in Egypt and I worked in Deir Zor. A lot of people get surprised when I tell them I worked in Deir Zor. I loved it. It's one of the best assignments I've had. Uh, it's a different challenge in every assignment. Then, uh, after three years in Shtember J, uh, you break out. We say we break out and we become, uh, we finish the field life, I would say, and then we go into the management. I joined the Shtember J uh, in Kuwait and I was the first Kuwaiti female engineer to go to the field. And after three years, still everybody of my friends would never understand why would I want to go and be in the field, wear coveralls for three years where I can enjoy life. I took it as a challenge. It's not my major, by the way. It's not what I went to school for. Then I came back, and after uh, three years, I stayed in Kuwait for one year. Then I decided to be a mom, to take another challenge. <laughs> and uh, I asked the Shtember J that I don't want to be mobile anymore. And the answer was yes but uh, if you decide to stay in Kuwait, you will not progress as fast in your career because our career is built in mobility. I took it. At the beginning, I hesitated. To me, is career is very important, especially when you do the field. Now it's time to, to gain what you've done and become into the management ladder. But uh, I think I was, uh, I was lucky, I would say, because I was open-minded. I think when you put into a challenge, you have to find your way of how to make it to your advantage. Then uh, I was not picky on the assignments that I took. I did sales, I did uh, HSC a little bit, some HR, I would say. I did some technical roles, and I learned in everyone. And I think I am here today in my position because I did this, even though I was told that this is gonna be a limitation to my career. Because when I stayed in Kuwait, I did different assignments in Kuwait, maybe not progression as, as, a, as a grade or a position, but I learned from all of those uh, opportunities that were given to me. Then uh, after that, I think four years back, I received a call from our, one of our presidents saying, Shayma, it's time to go out. You've been in Kuwait for so long and you need to, uh, to go back again. So I went back to my kids and I said, okay, now we're moving out. <laughs> and the first thing my son said is, why do we need to leave Kuwait? You always travel. Can you just go do this job that you do and you come back? So anyway, we, we ended up in Abu Dhabi, which was my last assignment. I did three years. And then I came back to Kuwait for this position. Today, I can proudly say that from the oil field services, I'm the only uh, female from Middle East and Asia that took this position in an international company like Schlumberger. I'm very happy in it. It's been uh, not easy road, I would say. It is, uh, when it comes to male and female, I think I never consider this as an obstacle. I believe that it's not about male and female, it's more about capability, proving yourself. And I heard several women in the beginning saying that we have to double prove ourselves. ourselves. I think sometimes yes, but we should not keep it as something uh, a concern to us. I think we should always believe that a competent person is the person who should take the job, whether it's male or female. Um, uh, I still think, with all due respect to all the male here, women do things better because we, th we think differently. I agree. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> we solve problems differently. We analyze things differently. And I always say that since you can be a mom, you can do anything you want in life. Hello, bravo. Because it's the only job that there is no manual, no one tells you how to do it, and every kid is a different world. And I tell you, I have two, and I feel that I raise them in different houses because they're different. So I think this is my story, uh, and I did not give them a seat. It's a success way. story, Shaima. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> you know, I, I'll keep several things. Uh, I'm sorry because you, you, you gave us and you gave me personally a two story to tell. Uh, the first is uh, a story to tell to my students tonight uh, exactly how to succeed and how to persevere, but uh, a story to tell to my team and my wife tonight as well, always say yes. So thank you for sharing that. So. <laughs>
because that's how you started. So this I is something yes, I would. Mean I'm yes, yes, I will insist on that on the family and the professional level. Say always best to the husband and the wife and to, to the yes, team. You can always say yes, but I'll do what I But then you do whatever you want. Okay, but I mean, but the yes will be helpful sometimes. Uh, and I'll come back to you. I would like to have again a, a part of your story about you call that the challenges, but the most difficult challenge you had when you got your position. I'm sure that there are people pushing you uh, to push to, to get the position, but you had some resistance, I'm sure, without even naming it. So in case you can share this with us, how you manage within this specific challenge, if you don't mind, and you would like to share with us. Uh, I move to Dalia Wahbe, uh, the Regional Director of IFC, International Finance Corporation for Egypt. Uh, I know that IFC is, uh, I know that ICC is, is involved, is involved about women empowerment, about women on board, about many programs. Um, it's a quick question. Do you think that women on board should be mandatory uh, for all boards or the idea would be much an awareness campaign and how IFC is, is really uh, working on that on both levels, on empowering, about uh, uh, pushing uh, new boards to be more proactive and more productive uh, uh, we, w while having women on board, and I'm convinced about that, and I work on that. And the third, what exactly you're doing to, through the region. And you can even share your story in the second part. Uh, yes, Talia, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so first, just a correction. So I'm the country manager for the Levant countries. I'm not the regional director. So That's what is written I, here, so I your know, excellency, so, you no, have no, to. No, no, I know it, it keeps, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's fine. It's a promotion, it's not a demotion. So <laughs> hopefully this becomes my next title. Um, um, so. Again, I think today was, was a day about women and women participation, I would say in life at large, it's not just at the, at the, at the economy. But then within IFC, what we started looking at is really the um, economic contribution of women and, and how would empowerment of women would actually contribute to the overall economy, the growth agendas and, and, and targets. Um, you asked the question about specifically, I mean, we're looking at this across the board. We started with empowering women through access to finance, in microfinance, in, uh, through uh, venture capital and other, other uh, fina financing uh, venues. But then we also looked at advocacy and making the argument, why does it make sense to empower women? Is it just out of being good or does it make sense? And the same way we did uh, around how women participation in the workforce would add to productivity, it came to the assessment of does it make sense to have women on boards and what value do they bring to uh, being on the board. You asked whether it should be mandatory or not. I think some discipline always helps. If you look at the progress of, of uh, even corporations who put gender targets and work to achieve them, they usually deliver better than when you just adopt a mission statement and say, I will hire more women. So having a target and many times it's easier to measure yourself when this target is defined with a certain parameter, certain KPI. So I would say that some mandatory requirement makes sense, especially that you have precedence and evidence that shows that there is improvement and there's value addition. Uh, what are we doing in that as IFC? We're doing the, the women on board surveys. We started them in parts of MENA. Yeah, 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 last year we, we published the report for Jordan. This year we're publishing, actually tomorrow we'll be publishing the report for Lebanon. And then we're, we're actually basing this on actual uh, information and data that we're getting from the companies we, su we survey. Um, so that's the answer to the first question. I'll go to the second part, which is um, introducing myself. Um, so as, a, as, as was said, I'm Dalia Wahba. I work for IFC, I've been with IFC for 13 years now. Uh, and before that, I was a commercial banker uh, in Egypt. I'm Egyptian. I'm a mother of two kids. Uh, and um, so in, in the corporate banking world, um, I was lucky to work in a bank that actually empowered women. I didn't, I mean, acknowledged women and there was a women's support network because just senior management was full of women caliber. And with hard work and, I mean, taking challenges, being open to doing new things, again, I say yes a lot, but it's also yes to challenges. Um, I think, I mean, you, you do study something, but it doesn't define what you can be good at. And it's, it's really your attitude, your capacity. If you can do one thing, you learn the other things to do. So through this, uh, at a very young age, I got promoted to a manager position in this bank, but then that was just a local bank. It remains to this day to be very much a local bank, despite some branches outside of Egypt. 
And then came the opportunity with IFC. At a very junior level, I have to say, I mean, compared to where I, I was, be it grade-wise, be it pay-wise, but then it was something like, it's me and my assessment of me. Where do I see Dahlia in, in the world, not just in the job world? So I applied for, the, for actually two jobs in IFC, and I took the one that I liked more, which was on the investment stream. Today, my job as a country manager overseeing those three countries, I basically need to give a view on anything and everything IFC is to do in those countries. So somehow, I really need to understand what's happening in the different disciplines. In investment, we have different industries and sectors. On the advisory services, we have different practices. The reason I think I'm able to do this job well is that in my 13 years, whenever I was working for an industry team, when there was an opportunity or a need for me to do something different, I didn't shy away. Um, sometimes in an organization like ours, there's specialization. So if I come from the infrastructure team and there's a deal in the chemicals team, if I take this deal, it's be I'm being questioned. Can I deliver? Do I understand? Will I do the right job? How do I compare to our peers? We did have a situation where there needed to be a deal that has to be done very quickly, a very large one, one of the largest in the region, and basically it made sense to have someone from the country office do it. It was a chemicals deal. I was an infra. I did the deal. I did very well. Comes, I mean, in hindsight and applying in this job, the fact that I could do this deal, that I did other, worked with other departments in IFC, I was the most relevant person to do this job. Um, again, in IFC, I would say in, in, in more and more in, in, in bigger organizations, international organizations, it's becoming easier that we, we there are set the KPIs for Jordan inclusion, for setting the targets, for creating the space. It also allows the, the space to have the mentoring and networking uh, arrangements formally and informally to help this uh, woman grow and, and go for the opportunities because many times you don't go for it and it's, it's the, the censorship starts with you. Um, so I have to say, I mean, I've been lucky with that. Um, so there are definitely have been challenges, but I would say the, um, they were all manageable. Well, uh, Dalia, thank you very much. You know, listening to you, it seems so, so easy. You said, okay, I did that, I did very well. But I think that uh, the, the, the moral we can get is that uh, the luck, because it's being lucky, I think that luck in business environment is uh, looking for opportunity, because luck will never come up alone. It's, you have to dig to find really the opportunity, which you call luck, and then you have to deliver. And you said it uh, very humbly, but I have to repeat it. You said, okay, I did very well. So you had, you, f you looked for the opportunity, you had the opportunity, but you delivered at the same time. So you, you, you proved yourself and, and you fought hard. And this is something we have to get. Uh, I know that I've asked for three questions, but the organizer came to me, said that the audience is so excited to ask questions and to participate. So we, we'll start with that. We'll take some, some comments, some question to the panel or any experience, but just uh, uh, introduce yourself in three, uh, three seconds and ask your question in the next five, so we have time for everyone. So any comment, please? Yes, uh, Mrs. Uh, Nahas, that's if I'm not mistaken. Do you need a microphone? Or I repeat the question in all languages? Can we have a mic? Yes, thank you. I hope you'll uh, talk about microfinance. I hope. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's it. And I was very happy that everybody talked about uh, microfinance a little. So I'm Ilda Nahas. I'm, uh, I represent the network of the Lebanese microfinance associations. Uh, basically, we're a network of nine microfinance associations, and we have funds that we can provide for women, among others, and for youth, in order for them to grow their businesses. And this is part of what you've been discussing, the entrepreneurship, creation, sustainability, and eventually being able to step up. Maybe even we'll have many of our micro-entrepreneurs benefit from the billion dollar fund. So we're open, our doors are open to anyone who actually would like to assist women. We're here. Uh, we also provide some training and some mentorship at the same time. So thank you. Thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Yes, since you're on the side and you have the microphone, yes. Thank you. Uh, introduce yourself if you don't um, mind. My name is Anni Seferian. I would like to note that uh, indeed women today are marginalized because of their uh, marital status. Gender. Not only gender, marital status, being divorced, single mother, and all those stuff. Uh, I would like to say thank you to Ms. Saini because uh, I'm a member of the Blessing Foundation and it has extremely expanded my network. 
and it has severely helped me in becoming this uh, uh, quite active in the field of women and empowerment, and I hope that you continue this uh, uh, holding the flag for all of us. And thank you, ladies, because you are indeed a strong inspiration for women to keep going and uh, spread the strong power that we are. Thank you so much for this intervention. Actually, this is so rewarding, and sometimes they ask me, what keeps you going on? I tell them, you know, uh, this is so rewarding. When I get comments and when we do, when we get testimonials from people who have, who are, because no one comes to our network and leaves it. It's an ongoing, uh, growing network uh, with ongoing mentoring relationships. They, they start, and we have so many here uh, in our network, they start as, um, you know, a mentoring relationship and they continue and they become friends and, uh, <laughs> so this is super rewarding and uh, this is how we, we measure our impact through people like you. Thank you for the intervention. Other comments, please? Uh, yes. So, oh, no. I'm listening to a Dr. nice voice. Fahad. But yes, I'm sorry. How are you? Hi, Fahad. Rendal, I know Rendal. I'm coming from Paris. وصلت اليوم. أنا سؤالي لك. Sorry, رئيسة التجمع السيدات اللبنانيات بفرنسا. جيت خصوصي كرمال اليوم وكهالكم يوم دكتور فاد نحن عملنا محاضرة معك بباريس من كان جمعيتنا عمرها كم شهر عن الانتربرنوريا وفمينا إن شاء الله ما ندمتوا لا لا بروف عم بيجي وكانت كتير المحاضرة عملناها بالسنة بمجلس الشيوخ وكانت كتير في إشانج كتير قوي من وقتها لهلا نحن وضع النسوان بفرنسا مختلف لأنه نحن على كل الجبهات وني با إيدي معنا سوري خدمة تساعدنا قد المرأة هون بس عم نحمس كتير هالنسوان هالفتيات اللي عمرهم بثلاثين عم يرجعوا من وراء محاضرتك رجعوا على لبنان سؤالي هو أي متى رح نبلش بلبنان نعطي قروض مدعومة للمرأة لتفتح شركة حكيت هالموضوع بس إجا حاكم مصرف لبنان دكتور ياد سلامي على اليونسكو سألته هالسؤال وقال لي ما في أجواء بلبنان ما حبيت جوابه صراحة إنه شو ما في أجواء يعني بفرنسا بأوروبا في قروض مدعومة دي دي بخي سيبونسيوني مشان المرأة تقدر تفتح شركة مش كل النساء عندها الإمكانيات بعرف المدام قالت إنه بيساعدوها بكل شيء بس في مصاري هلأ في نساء جيين من عيال عندهم شركات وعندهم بزنس بس في مرة عندها أفكار وعندها قدرات بس ما عندها الطاقة المادية أمتين بلبنان رح نعمل قروض مدعومة للمرأة خصوصي للمرأة بأوروبا بتنعمل لأنه ما مرة عم يتحمسوا كل شيء بده مصاري والوضع الاقتصادي وموا ميكرو فينانس ما بعرف أي طريقة يعني حكم لمصرف لبنان بيقول لي ما دام ما كتير في أجواء بلبنان بلا في أجواء إذا بتشجعوا المرأة أنا أكيد في كتير ناس بدها تنطلق وتعمل أنتخاب خنارية وفمينا أنا أكيد بس هذا سؤال يريد حضرتك بعرف إنه فيك تدعم هذا الموضوع ميرسي yes, uh... مدام التيف رح جاويك بس عايخد بعد هيك مداخلك من جاوي ثلاث مرة للبانل تفضل يا مدام سوري بس في في ما جاي بس ارجع زيد على سؤال ديقة بس لان في ميكرو مع بنام تفضل يا مدام شكرا كتير وبدي حيي السيدات الرائدات والحقيقة نحن منفتخر كتير بهالعمل الريادي لكن عندي سؤال بدي وجهه لمدام آه. أنا دكتورة بتولي حفوفي من مجلس النسائي لجنة التخطيط والدراسات ومهتمين كتير بالأعمال الصغيرة و يعني زيادة الريادة في مجال الأعمال الصغيرة الحقيقة التجربة عم تقول أنه اليوم في محلات كتير من بنوك ومن مؤسسات قدمت دعم لمشاريع صغيرة خصوصا للنساء الريفيات وطلعت منشآت صغيرة عملت عنها دراسة أنا قدمتها بمنظمة المرأة العربية لكن هالمنشآت الصغيرة عم تتعرض لكثير من التحديات على مستوى التسويق لأن في منافسة كثير بالسوق مع المنتجات المؤسسات الكبيرة ومع المنتجات اللي عم تجي من الفار أسل بهمني أعرف من مدام حسيني أنه هل أنتوا كمؤسسات حاولتوا تساعدوا بحل مشكلات التسويق لهؤلاء النساء 
وخصوصا الحرفي سؤال تاني للسيدة من الكويت حبينا كتير تجربتك وقلتي انه التحديات وقفت مرة بعملية تقدم بترقي بالعمل وهيدي بتتعرض لها النساء دايما باي ميدان مش بس بالشركات النفط هل هناك اجراءات او طلبتي انت انه تحديد اجراءات معينه تسمح انه النساء ما يخسروا تدرجهم بسبب عامل الامومه والاهتمام بالاسره وشكرا شكرا على مبادئ حي اكيد مجلسكم العربي الكريم اللي بعرفه منيح وتعرفنا على بعضنا بمصر وبهنيكم بعرف قديش انتم عم تشتغلوا بهالموضوع، هل في بعد تعليق او سؤال بالمخلي البانل؟ تفضل يا مل... عاد بعضكم اسم الله في الميكرو بايدك روحتيه مدام ما فيش ادنى شك ان العشر سنوات يمكن ال 20 سنه الاخيره بدات تشهد هذا الاهتمام بالمشاريع الصغرى وانا لا ادري لماذا حينما تاتي للمراه مشاريع صغرى ما انا لا نتحدث عن المشاريع الكبرى دعوني أقول لكم أنها أصبحت يعني المشاريع الكبرى للحيتان الكبار والمشاريع الصغرى والمايكرو للصغار أنا اللي بقولها أن كأن حتى على مستوى الدول لدعم المشاريع الصغيرة وعندنا تجربة في ليبيا وفي غير ليبيا أن أصبحت موضة وجمعيات كثيرة تأسست وأصبحوا يتاجروا بهذه المشاريع الصغرى وباسم النساء الفقيرات نادرة أتذكر حينما كنت في البنك الدولي في عمل استشاري هناك أن أجريت دراسة عالمية على فائدة هذه المشاريع أعتقد مثل ما تفضلت هذه المشاريع تواجه مشكلة القصور في الرقابة قصور في التقييم القصور في التسويق القصور في المتابعة والتراكم فأنا أعتقد علينا أن ننتبه قبل ما أن نسحى بعد عشر سنين ونلاقي حتى المشاريع الصغرى هذه تسلل إليها الفساد وانهارت زي ما انهارت بس ليه عم تطلع فيه وقت أنت فساد أنا ما خصني أنا ما خصني أنا المحامي إقبال مراد دوغان رئيسة المجلس النسائي اللبناني ولكن رئيسة رابطة المرأة العاملة في لبنان يمكن المؤسسة الوحيدة اللي بتشتغل على قضايا النساء اللي اللي اشتغلوا واللي تغيرت الادوار التقليديه من المراه للبيت والرجل لبرا وصارت المراه تغيرت المهمه تاعتها ولكن لم تتغير لا القوانين ولا الاجراءات اللي ممكن تساعدها انها تنجح في عملها. مشان هيك نحن هلا عندنا مشروع جديد وتغيير يعني تعديل قانون العمل بالزاميه دور الحضانه تابعه للمؤسسات بقانون العمل حتى الأول شغلة بتعاني المرأة منها هي قصة الأمومة وين بدها ترك الطفل أكر أغلب أطفالنا عم ينتركوا عند الخدم وعم يتعلموا بالآخر الأثيوبي والفلبيني وبشكل أنه الانتاجية تاعت المرأة حتكون دايما قليلة لأنه بيكون عندها هاجس الولاد ثلاث سنين الأول المفروض تكون بكل البلاد العربية إجمالا دور الحضانة صارت إلزامية في المؤسسات إلا عنا بعدين في مؤسسات لا تأخذ نساء وخصوصا صبايا وبتشارط عليهم أنه ما يتزوجوا لفترة معينة أو إذا كان استقامت بيطردوها من شغلة نحن بدنا نعرف أنه هيدي الأمومة بالبلد هيدي وظيفة مش للمرأة لوحدة ولا العيلة هي هيدي وظيفة اجتماعية يعني نحن النساء لو اضربنا ما بدنا نجيب اولاد شو بيصير بالبلد؟ بيجي بيجي وقت انه هذا الشعب ما عم يتجدد نحن عم نجيب المستقبل لبلدنا انا ما خصني والله مشان هيك مشان هيك لازم نحن ناخذ كل الـ الـ الاجراءات وكل الاليات وكل القوانين اللي بتساعدنا انه نقوم بدورنا العملي وبنفس الوقت نقوم بدورنا العائلي لانه اولادنا بت... كثير عزيزين علينا انه نتركهم انا بتشكرك لان قلت لي كثير عندهم اياها بالقلب بتشكرك وبشدد انا معكم انا عم ساعدكم ماني ضدكم ستنا بس ما تزعلي مني على خلي البانل يجاوب Maybe you, you can start and you can give your uh, closing remark. I was granted uh, three minutes or less. Uh, yes. And, and you, you had a question, and then Mrs. Hosseini, and then yes. So you want me to answer your 
No, forget the first one because you had the better one now. <laughs> well, I think that the, the, the key issue that was mentioned that, that affects women in the workplace, women as entrepreneurs, is in fact the, the balancing of the, of the work and, uh, and family. I have myself two, two sons and when they were growing up, I was you know, torn between home and, uh, and work. And of course, having an infrastructure is the key thing. Without an infrastructure, they, always, they always say that behind the, uh, every successful man is a, is, is a wife. I would I say beside, we need, beside. Uh, we, we need wives too, in the sense that we need, we need an infrastructure to support the home and uh, family. Otherwise, uh, we will always choose a family because uh, the family will stay with us. And it's, uh, it is very critical to establish a, a correct uh, infrastructure. Thank you, Ms. Shamlu. Ms. Hosseini, you had a question and you have a closing remark. Yes. Uh, marketing. بالنسبة لموضوع التسويق يلي طرحتيه هو كان أساسا الحافز الأول يلي خلينا نحن نتطرق لنشتغل مع سيدات بالمناطق الريفية لأن أول ما اجتمعنا طلبوا يعني جمعية مايكرو فاينانس بتاعنا بالمايكرو فاينانس طلبت منا أنه نجتمع ونشوف ونعطيهم إرشاد فمن بعد ما مجموعة نساء بالبلاسيك فاونديشن قعدوا مع الستات بيّن أنه الشيء الوحيد اللي بدهن إياه هو التسويق من هون نحن انطلقنا بشيم من لبنان بالشراكة مع اليو ان هومن كرميل نعطيون كمان اليوم ما فيك تسوق شيء ما بيتسوق فاليوم ترجع يعني اليوم صحيح التسويق هو شيء أساسي بس كمان بديك شيء يتسوق لما بده يتسوق بده يكون فيه ستايل يعني اليوم الـ 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 السوق عندهم متطلبات من ناحية السعر من ناحية الجودة من ناحية الشكل من ناحية كل هذا خلينا نحن نرجع نكون هذا المشروع يلي هو منجمع السيدات من الأرياف مع الديزاينرز وبعدنا عم نشتغل معهم حتى نخبرهم كيف بيعملوا تسعير للبضاعة لأنه ما فيك اليوم تعمل شيء كتير حلو وكتير غالي كمان هذا ما فيك تسوقيه ففي كتير هون عقبات عم نجرب نحلها واحدة ورا الثانية بس تقالك أنه في أونلاين بلاتفورم عم تنخلق لأغراض هدول السيدات في كتير من الإكزيبيشنز عم بتصير عم بيشاركوا فيها بده يصير في إن شاء الله شراكة مع سوق الطيب حتى نصير نعم نخلق شيء بيشبه سوق الطيب بس نسميه سوق شيء من لبنان وهلا ب 22 شهر حنطلق منترينج بروجرام لسيدات يلي بشيء من لبنان مع سيدات بلاسينج فاونديشن وحتكون كل ست من ال 430 ست عم بتحط هدف تسويقي تساعدها في المرشدة كرمال توصل خلال ست شهور فهذا نحن اللي عم نعمله وان شاء الله خير Thank you. Sid Shaima, you asked me a question and you have a question. Thank you. In regard to the question, you asked me how we can change. Do you hear me? 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 If there are rules that are supposed to be a woman, I'm talking about the company that I'm in. I don't think إن إحنا عندنا هذه المشكلة. I think إن القوانين تمشي على الكل. لما أنا قلت إن ما limitation اللي صارت لي لما لما ما طلعت لأن طبيعة عملنا تحتاج إن إحنا نشوف different clients و different world. أنا بالنسبة لي تعلمت أشياء جديدة من مكاني. هل هي ال تقتصر إن المرأة إذا كانت أم أو إذا كانت خذت تحتاج لا ما شفتها at least في مجال عملي أنا. As a closing remarks, I think there is one thing, if I may ask all of you women today, is to make sure that you prepare a woman or a young lady to take your place in the job, in uh, mentoring. And to me, I do it. I will never leave my chair until there is a lady ready to take it. I think this is, this is something out of... نشجع المرأة. I think this is a minimum we could do. إن إحنا اليوم نصر إن إحنا أنا أنا شيمة راح هيئ واحدة أو ثنتين إنهم يكونون potential يأخذون مكاني. Whether new hire, whether ناس موجودة, whether إذا إحنا بدينا بنفسنا صدقوني راح يوصل حريم. I know a lot of people don't like it because people think that the competition is men. I think we start with ourselves. We do it. We push it, 
And then it was, يعني, I think it comes from us, all of the women here, they, they believe in women. And I think the reason we're gathering here because we want to promote women. Let's start with ourselves. Let's go leave today saying that I will put effort and time to prepare a woman to take my place when I move on. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Dalia? I think just quickly just I want the to microphone respond. if you don't mind yes um, I'm thinking just quickly to respond to the point made on the um, uh, financing programs for women projects um, there is there is we there is a gap and uh, as rightly said from the floor that uh, globally there are programs to um, to support this uh, Lebanon actually in the MENA region has been a place where we had very successful um, uh, initiatives with the BLC Bank. We have a gender finance program. And um, uh, you probably heard in the news a couple, um, last month actually, we had the Mashuk Gender Conference. And there, there was uh, the announcement of the Mashuk Gender Facility that would also support the development of financing solutions for women in the Mashuk countries, uh, Jordan, Lebanon, and, uh, and Iraq. Um, I mean, my closing remarks is really um, pretty much what Shayma uh, said. Um, it's about uh, leading by example, it's about giving back, and it's about mentorship. And I think one thing that we, I mean, in preparing women to take more leadership positions, um, it's, it's really not to shy away from opportunities when they come. I think there's something in our discipline that it's kind of not appropriate to ask for what you want. Actually, it's very appropriate. And, and you're not stepping on anyone's foot when you ask for what you want and you think you can do. So I think that I would leave with this thought. Thank you. I'm just going to ask you a question in a few minutes. Madam Altef, the development of 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 لأنه وقت بنوصل على 110% من الناتج المحلي يعني ولا في بقى ضمانات بينعطوا للمصارف ولا المصارف قادرين مع الفائده العاليه فالتمويل بدي اقول لك بكل صراحه ولكل رياديين يا بده يكون عبر مايكرو فاينانس انتيتي هذا الحال يا بده يكون من اكويتي يعني نتجمع ما نشتغل بقى لحالنا وهذا شغله كثير مهمه نشتغل كاشخاص كجروبات لنقدر نعطي تمويل عبر اليوم الدعم عم يكون كثير صريح رح يكون كثير صعب الوضع الاقتصادي اللي مارق في لبنان منو على حكي مصر بلا على بنوك بركي 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 موريس بيعطينا شوية تحلول هلا المدام المدام هاللي حكيت يس بس دي الان وعد خلصي يا لا لا بس هلا بوصل ستنا عالميا عالميا عندنا تقريبا 48% من الشركات هاللي بلشون بنساء بين شخص وخمس اشخاص يعني هن مايكرو كومبانيز وعنا 47% من المية بين خمسة وعشرة يعني اسم الأكبر لش لشركات هاللي خلقون نساء هن شركات صغيرة جدا ما يسمى بالمايكرو كومبانيز فوقتها نحنا بنحكي فيهم مش بالطريقة السلبية ستنا نحنا اللي حكيتوني إياه وقلتوا لي نحنا مش مسؤولين بدأ الكل لازم نشتغل إيد بالإيد على رواء كفريق عمل ونحنا بدنا نهدأ دكتور مش معقول ست ماي ست ماي بس بدي اقول لك شغله وبنهي فيها بس انا بدي اقول لك شغله بيوصل مأخر 30 دقيقة او بيزيد 30 دقيقة كمان يعني مش عم بفهم هيدي ست ماي انت اليوم هيدي زقفة لها ولا ايه؟ ست ماي هلا انا فيني وقفك لأنه اليوم يومنا انتبه مضبوط ما في شك بس انا رح كمل معك لا بدي اقول شيء لأنه بنهي فيها ريادة الأعمال قبل ما نحكي بالفكرة والتمويل هو شخص هو طريقة التفكير وهو شخص كيف بيقدر بتعايش مع الحياة اليوم ست الوزيرة ماي انت كنت ريادة وتكنت صحافة وبركي بوراء ايادتك تكلفت وباسم كل الجميع بالحرية باعتداء عليك وبعد الاعتداء كنت كمان ريادية لأنه حتى كيف تخطيت هالمشكلة كنت فيها ريادة والريادة بضلة بقلب وكيف خلقت هالفونديشن هي ريادة كتير كبير ونجاح فريادة أول شيء هي شخص تفكير عقل وقلب أهلا وسهلا فيكم Thank you شكرا Thank you ladies طفولوا الميكرو عملوا معروف بليز ما في غير حل بقى